fifth graders, welcome to Eureka Math. This is Module 1, Lesson 3, and our objective today is to use exponents to name place value units and explain patterns in the placement of the decimal point. Okay, so this is just more of the same. We're going to use exponents. Do you remember what I said about exponents? Okay, so if we have 110, there's zero exponents there. It's 1, right? If I have 10 times 10, ooh, that looks like a 4, doesn't it, because of my handwriting. Let me rewrite it. 10 times 10 equals 10 squared, just like when we're finding area, right? Then 10 times 10 times 10 equals 10 cubed. Okay, so there's one, two, three. That means three is my exponent. And I can keep going. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 equals, wait a minute, too many. I got excited. 10 to the fourth and 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 equals 10 to the fifth. And I can just keep going. Sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, all the way to infinity, right? So use exponents to name place value units, right? So if I have just one 10, that's my one spot. Here's my hundreds. Here's my thousands. Here's my uh, ten thousands, here's my hundred thousands, and we're going to explain patterns in the placement of the decimal point. And where does that decimal point go, right? Does it move to the right? Does it move to the left? It looks like a smiley face. Maybe it's a cat. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting off track. All right, so please open your learn book to the lesson three problem set. Write your name on your paper. And we are going to write the following in exponential form. Exponential form means we're going to use our exponents, okay? Ooh, I didn't mean to draw a line through it. I wanted to underline it, okay? So if 100 equals 10 squared, how many zeros are here? 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 10 to the 4. Really easy. Isn't this easy? Or we could write it like this, but that's not exponential form. That's expanded form, okay? Here, 3, right? Which would be 10 times 10 times 10 equals 1,000. This one's easy, 10 times 10, it's 10 squared. How about here? Well, this is 10 times 10 equals 100. And then 10 times 10 equals 100. So that's one, two, three, four tens. Ten to the fourth. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, ten to the sixth. This is easy, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, ten to the sixth. All you're doing is counting zeros, right? And we call that an exponent. This number is called the exponent. Exponent. going to become super useful to you. We've already used it when we find area, right? Area equals length times width, and if we have 2 times 4, 2 times 10, right, our answer becomes 20, but it is units squared, right? That squared is this squared here. Okay. Write the following in standard form. So standard form means show what it actually means. Okay, so if this is 10 times 10 times 10, up here, I already showed you, 10 times 10 times 10 equals 1,000. So this is like saying 9 times 1,000, right? And 9 times 1 is 9, and three zeros after it. Okay. How about this one? Four zeros. So I'm gonna, first I'm going to multiply 39 times 1, and I'm going to get 39. And then I'm going to add four zeros after it. Okay. And I'm going to use all the, I'm going to do all the multiplication. Uh, okay. 
Now, that's multiplication, so I'm adding zeros, remember? Now, div division means subtracting zeros. So I have 10, 10, 10 squared, which equals 100. So that's two zeros. So I'm just going to cut off this one and this one, and my new answer is 72. Be careful. Division and multiplication do different things. Multiplication adds and division subtracts. Now I've got 10 to the third, or 10 cubed, which equals 10 times 10 times 10. So there's three zeros there. And I'm going to cut off one, two, three zeros. And I'm left with 7,200. How about over here? 4 and 25 thousandths. So three zeros. That means I'm going to move that decimal point three places. Here I added zeros, and here I'm moving the decimal point, but it's the same idea. I'm going to move it one, two, three places. 4,025. Okay. Now, here I'm multiplying four spaces. Well, there aren't even enough spaces to move it for. One, two, then I have to add two zeros here. Three, four. Okay, so four, zero, two, five, zero, zero. Good. All right, that was multiplication. A little bit trickier because we were using decimals, but I think you understand the idea is the same. We're making the number bigger. Okay, and that is a comma. So, division means we're moving it the other direction, doesn't it? We're making the number smaller. So I need to move this how many spaces? Two spaces. So one, two. So now I've got 0 0.725 thousandths. Right. And here, seven and two tenths. Again, I'm moving it two spaces, so there's one, but now I don't have another space, so I'm going to have to add a zero, two, okay? So point zero seven two. Great. Think about the answers to 2A through D, so this side, right? Explain the pattern you use to find an answer when you multiply or divide a whole number by a power of 10. Okay, so you add or subtract zeros, right? Think about the answers to E through H over here, right? Explain the pattern used to place the decimal in the answer when you multiply or divide a decimal by a power of 10. So we move the decimal as many times as there was powers, right? We move the decimal to the right or left the same number of times as the exponent. Good. All right. Complete the patterns. So all we're doing here is we're making a pattern, and in this one, they've moved the decimal over one. And here they, to get this one, so they're going to move it over again. And what are we going to get? We're going to get the number of three. Then they moved it over again, and we got the number 30. And they're going to move it over again, and we're going to get 300. And they're going to move it over again, and we're going to get 3,000. So what were they doing here? They were multiplying by 10 in each one. This one times 10, this one times 10, this one times 10, right? Because 3 times 10 is 30. And 30 times 10 is 300. And 300 times 10 is 3,000. And 3,000 times 10 is, you know, you could just go on forever and ever and ever. Okay, so that was the pattern there. What are we doing here? Looks like they moved 
the decimal over how many spaces? So this six went from here to here, right? So they went one, two spaces over. Okay, so let's see. Does that mean that they're dividing by, because the number's getting smaller, they're dividing by 10 squared, I think. Hmm, yes. So that would give us 650 here. Right, so they cut off two zeros, and here they cut off two zeros, and now we're going to cut off two again, except now we've got 6.5. And if we divide by 10 squared again, what are we going to get? We're going to move it over 1, 2, and we're going to have 0 0.065. So this one was divided by 10 squared. So seeing that pattern is part of your job. Okay, here we've got two next to each other. So we don't even know what to start with. We have a number here in the middle, and the only way we have to the only thing we have to go on are these two numbers next to each other. So I think it went from 94 to 9, which means it's getting smaller, which means they're dividing by 10. Okay? So this number divided by 10 would be, and we don't have to start at the front. No one said we had to start at the, at the beginning, right? This one would be 943. And this number divided by 10 would be 0.943. But what are we going to do here? We've got no number to divide from. So to go this way, we're going to have to multiply, aren't we? So 94, right? thousand and three hundred. We're just adding a zero there. Okay, so that one was divided by ten. And does that make sense? We can check our work. Ninety-four thousand divided by ten is nine thousand four hundred. Okay. All right. Uh, this one looks easy. Nine 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 zero nine 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 zero zero. So I see one zero, two zeros, nine nine. I'm gonna add three zeros. 9, 9, 9. I'm going to add four zeros. Now be careful where you put your commas. Now 9, 9, 9, and now five zeros. 3, 4, 5, and put a comma here and a comma there. Okay, that was easy. What did we do? We just multiplied by 10. This is just multiply by 10. Multiply by 10. Multiply by 10. So what was our pattern? To multiply by 10. Okay. Now, what are we doing here? We're getting bigger, so we're multiplying. And 7.5 turns into 750. That means that decimal point went over two spaces. So let's multiply by 10 squared. Okay, 10 squared. So what did they do? They added two zeros on here. So now we can multiply by 10 squared here. We have seven, five, and then the three original zeros, and we're going to add two more. So I'm going to put my comma here, and my comma here, and then I've got this number, and I'm going to multiply that by 10 to the squared, and that's going to be seven, five, and I have my one, two, three, four, five originals, and I'm going to add two more, two more, and there's, that's a zero. Okay, my handwriting is getting worse as the day goes on. And what do I do here? Well, I'm going to have to move that decimal the other direction from this one and get 0, 7, 5. Okay? All right. And I can check my work times 10 squared. All right, my pattern here was times 10 squared. So the numbers that were multiplying got bigger, the numbers that were dividing got smaller, and depending by how far we moved them, some of them were multiplied by 10, some of them were um, divided by 10, some of them were multiplied by 10 squared, divided by 10 squared. Okay, they gave you lots of options there. F, explain how you found the known numbers in set B. Well, 
the unknown numbers. What did we do? We divided by 10 squared. All right. Explain how you found the numbers in set D. Well, that was easy. We multiplied by 10. Okay, Shawnee and Marlon missed the lesson on exponents. Oh no, they didn't watch my Ed puzzle. Shawnee incorrectly wrote 10 to uh, 10 to the fifth equals 50 on her paper. And Marlin incorrectly wrote 2.5 times 10 squared equals 2.500 on his paper. What mistake did Shawnee make? Well, she said 10 to the fifth equals 50. Well, we know that 10 to the fifth means 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, right, which would actually be 1 and 5 zeros after it. Right, the answer would be 100,000. And what she did is she multiplied, instead of that, she multiplied 10 times 5 and got 50, right? That's what she did. So she multiplied ten times fifty instead of ten five times. Okay. Oh, my pen. What mistake has Marlin made? So he said that 2.5 times 10 squared equals 2 and 5 zeros. Okay. Explain using words, numbers, or pictures why this. So Marlin added zeros, but he didn't multiply by 100 because he didn't move the decimal. He added zeros. And he added the right number of zeros, but he didn't move that, he didn't move that decimal without moving the decimal, okay? And what he should have done is 2.5 times 10 squared, right? He should have moved the decimal point over 1, 2, and he should have gotten 2,500. Remember, this is English, so this is 2 and 5 tenths, and this is 2,500, right? Don't get your decimals and your commas mixed up, right? We're not using Venezuelan style. We're definitely using English style, okay? Just be careful. Be careful, okay? So that's what he should have done. He should have added two zeros and moved the decimal point over. So that decimal point, actually, sorry, is wrong. Ooh, I did it wrong too. One, two, should have been here. Okay, one, two, so one, two. Because what you're doing is you're multiplying two 0.5 times 100. Right. I was so excited about telling you the difference between decimal points and commas that I didn't realize I made a mistake. All right. Um, tomorrow we'll go through the homework together in class. Have a great day.